on everyone my name is Andy welcome back to another FPL video it is finally launched and usually we don't do first drafts outside the start of the season because obviously before the league starts we're all in the same boat with unlimited transfers so we do a couple of first draft videos um, they usually go down quite well but we don't do it during the season for obvious reasons there's wild cards and chips but we don't get unlimited transfers until now so because everyone has been given them and there's lots of different people with uh, kind of different chips and different strategies and stuff and putting different teams together i thought i would go through a few different drafts in this video so kind of one if you're looking at using bench boost one if you've got no chips and one if you've got your wild card as well so i'm going to go through kind of three different drafts in this one it's not really specifically about my team i'll go through that in a separate video what my strategy is and why but in this one i'm pretty much just looking at drafts so if that's the kind of thing you want make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe if you're new around here because there's loads more videos coming for the rest of the week as well let's jump into this one so the first draft is for somebody that has got their wild card left but isn't necessarily looking to bench boost in game week 30 uh, now depending on what chips you got left like i said you'll have different strategies i think for someone that's got all their chips left the, the main kind of strategy that most people are using is bench boost in game week 30 wild card in game week 31 use your free hit and triple captain whenever else you can this is for someone that's not necessarily either looking to use their bench boost or hasn't maybe even got their bench boost but still wants to use their unlimited transfers to nail that double game week and then we'll wild card out of it in game week 31 now one thing to remember while doing that i'm not saying it's a bad idea at all um, but you've got to think a little bit about team value so you've got to maybe look at the team you're going to choose for game week 30 with your unlimited transfers because remember any players you've got value built up in from your team if you take them out with your unlimited transfers you'll lose that and if you want to put them back in you'll have to pay extra now if you've got a really high team value or there's only a few players in your team that have gone up in price it's not going to make a huge difference but it is something to consider maybe but this is for someone that really wants to attack the double game week i think i would go for something like this so Obviously, there's only four teams with a double game week. So the max amount of players that you can play, unless you're using a bench boost, is 11. So one team, you're not going to get um, three players from. So for this one, I've gone... I think triple Sheffield United defence is probably something I would do just because of how good their record is and how good their fixtures are in the double game week. Now, which way around you want to do this will differ. Some people want Henderson in goal. Can absolutely get behind that. And maybe an Arsenal defender is actually a better option. Someone like Bellerin, someone like Tierney, potentially, if you think they're going to start both games. The problem with the Arsenal defence is I'm not sure if we know 100% who's going to start both games. And it is a little bit of a risk. But when you're making a kind of unlimited transfers just for one double game week, and you maybe got, you know, there's a lot of safe picks in here, I would say. Abamian, Aguero are pretty safe. De Bruyne, Grealish. A lot of people are going to have these players. Maybe going for an Arsenal defender is a little bit of a differential isn't the worst case thing. So if you wanted to do that, I'd probably take out Leno for Henderson and then take out Egan or O'Connor. Now, Stevens is probably the best Sheffield United defender to go for. I think if I was free hitting uh, or using my unlimited transfers to go for the double gaming, he would be the one in there. In terms of Triple Man City, now I think for me, the first two on my list are Aguero and Kevin De Bruyne. I think they'll be pretty much in everyone's teams for obvious reasons. De Bruyne has been so good this year, and we know how explosive Aguero can be. Two, hate, uh, two home games, Arsenal and Burnley, is decent enough. So I definitely want those two. The real choice comes from the third player, because Sterling, Mares, Sané, Bernardo Silva, they can all play on the flanks. Which one's going to play both games? It's really hard to tell. I think Sterling has been good this year from a stats perspective, but hasn't quite converted that into FPL points. If you're treating this like a clean slate for him to come back into the side now and do something... I do like him as a third option, and one of the reasons I would go for him instead of someone like Laporte in defence, who, if I was creating a team now to hold for the long term over the rest of the season, I don't have another wild card, for example, and I want to make use of the unlimited transfers, I probably would look at someone like Laporte instead of Sterling. But in terms of no nailing the double game, the problem is if you go for Laporte, then you can't obviously have a second Man City midfielder alongside Aguero, because that would be four players, of course. So you would have to then go for, if you wanted to stick to double game week players, maybe you take out one of the Sheffield United defenders and go for Laporte instead. But then you've got to put in a Sheffield United midfielder. Not quite sure about that, to be honest. I just think Fleck, okay, and Norwood, potentially good bench boost options. Not sure I'd want to play them in my first kind of 11. So that's why I've gone for Sterling. Now, if I was thinking longer term, which I'll come on to in a draft in a bit, I might put Laporte in. Looking at other players, so I think I've kind of already talked about who would definitely be in this team. So... Absolutely nailed on to every single draft I make. Aguero, Aubameyang, De Bruyne, Grealish. Because I think Grealish, Aston Villa players, I don't necessarily want to hold long term. 
if you're going to hold anyone long term, you hold Grealish, right? 6.4 million. I've said it before. No midfielder for that price has scored more points this year. They're fighting for their place in the Premier League. Um, I think he's going to do well despite the fixtures. But for the double game week, he's like the first Aston Villa player on the list. Other players you could go for in defence. Target. I've seen a few people talk about him. I'm not convinced myself. I think Aston Villa are just going to concede plenty of goals like they have done all season. Uh, and like I said, Arsenal defenders maybe you just can't fit in uh, a Man City defender. And then the other positions that are kind of up for discussion are Samata and Pepe. So up front, if you want a cheap player from these teams, is Samata or McBurney. Now McBurney has the stats. He hasn't really converted. How good Samata will be, I'm not 100% sure. He's looked okay in the minutes he's got for Aston Villa. Hasn't really put away too many goals so far in the league at least, but hasn't had a huge amount of games. So between him and McBurney, I just think Aston Villa probably a bit more likely to score goals. That's why I've targeted Sheffield United's defence. This is the way I prefer to kind of set out the team. And then Pepe, like there's not really any other double gaming options. Instead of Pepe, you can have Lacazette up front, potentially, if you think he's going to be a better option. But if you want to take a punt, someone like Pepe is probably where I would go. So it's Aston Villa that I've missed out three players from. You could go for McGinn. But for me, if you're going for a pretty much double gaming side, I'd rather have someone a bit more explosive than McGinn, like Lacazette uh, or Pepe. Obviously, you don't have to go for 11 double game week players. You could take Pepe out. You could put Bruno Fernandes in. You could put um, Son in from Spurs instead. You could go for a Chelsea player. They're playing Aston Villa. I fully expect Aston Villa to concede a few goals. So maybe you go for Pulisic or Mount or whoever it might be. So there are other options. But for someone who's definitely wildcarding out of their side in game week 31... This is the kind of draft I think I would put together. I, I think if I had to put this in right now and lock it in, I don't think I'd be too concerned about it. I don't think there's too many changes I'd make between now uh, and kind of next Wednesday when the deadline is. Maybe I'd have Henderson in goal. Maybe I'd have an Arsenal defender instead. But this is the kind of main template I'd have if I was wildcarding in game week 31. Okay, so next up is a draft for someone that does want a bench boost in game week 30, then to maybe a wildcard out of it in game week 31. And... Let's be honest, every, people that have got all their chips left, this is the strategy they're more than likely going to do. The only thing I would say, and it's not really a concern, but just something to think about, is there's only four teams with double game weeks, right? So you can only have three players from each of those teams. That's 12 double game week players in total. So three of your four bench players, at least, will have to be single game week players. And not only that, I've tried to put a team together with a decent bench boost as well. Uh, or with a decent bench and it does mean I've had to take a little bit of money out of my double game week players as well um, not much to be fair but because of that it might not be the best time to do it especially if you've got a triple captain so some people are concerned about playing the bench boost this week or playing any chips to be honest because obviously we don't know what's going to happen with the bench boost you've got, kind of got to nail four players whereas with the triple captain you've only got to nail it on one player so if you think De Bruyne, Sterling, Aguero, Aubameyang are going to start good minutes in both games they're a pretty good option for the rest of the season. Of course, you can use it in a single game week, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you wanted to go for a double game week, you could use the triple captain on that and then use your bench boost later. And bearing in mind, you're going to have to have at least three single game week players on your bench anyway to have four single game week players later on and use your tri triple captain in the double game week. So that is another option. The cons to doing that is more than likely, if you bench boost, you have, like I said, a little bit more money on your bench. So if you do it now... You can wildcard out of that and then get a cheaper bench. If you do it the other way, where you use your unlimited transfers to get a really good double game week side, use your triple captain, then wildcard next week, and then bench boost later on, I hope you're following this, then you're probably going to have to put a bit more money on your bench. So for the rest of the season, unless you want to use transfers on your bench, that bench will have a bit more money in it, which means there's less money in your first 11. Not necessarily an issue if you think the bench is going to get used quite a bit over these remaining kind of eight, nine game weeks. But it is something to think about. I do quite like the idea of using the triple captain, but I get people's concern with the bench boost. But players like Holgate, Lascelles, 4.3 million, they could be good options. A cheap playing goalkeeper like McCarthy at Southampton could be a good option. Um, but that's just something to think about. If you're going for a bench boost this week, this is probably what I would do. So my three Sheffield United players, I've got Henderson in goal, Stevens and Egan. I think... No matter which, I mean, you could put Rayner in goal for Aston Villa instead, but I think Leno and Henderson are the best picks. So you've got Leno from Arsenal, Aubameyang from Arsenal, uh, Grealish and Target from Villa. So two players from Arsenal, two from Villa, three from Sheffield United, again, triple defence, Egan, Stevens and Henderson. Now you might have a bit more money. Maybe you can put Baldock on instead of Egan. I don't think there's a huge amount in those players anyway. I kind of went with what I've got uh, money-wise. My team value is not the best. 
Uh, three players from Man City. I think, like I said, Sterling, De Bruyne, and Aguero are going to be in pretty much every draft. And then I've actually got four single game week players. Now, you, would, you don't necessarily have to do this. You could put Samata up front instead of Puki to get that extra double game week player. Uh, and then bench boost with Sice, Lascelles, uh, Cantwell, and Mount. It depends how you want to do it, right? But there are other options you could do uh, as well. You could have Rayner in goal, get rid of one of the Sheffield United defenders and put Fleck, Norwood, or McBurney up as well. But something like this, I think, is what I would do with bench boost. I think Norwich plays Southampton at home. So, I mean, that's a pretty good fixture. Pookie's had a bit of a rest. I think Cantwell, in terms of value, is probably the best fifth midfielder that you then could stick on the bench for the rest of the season. Obviously, if you're wildcarding afterwards, it doesn't matter. But in terms of team value, if you need someone that kind of price, he's a good option. Maybe you've got more money to spend. Uh, Lascelles has got a pretty good fixture this week. He plays Sheffield United. I think if any t- if any game's going to be like a, a kind of nil-nil, Sheffield United versus Newcastle could be it. Um, the Wolves have got really good fixtures. We talked about them quite a bit. And then Mason Mount for Chelsea, um, pretty much nailed under Frank Lampard when he's fully fit. So I'd expect him to start. And they're playing Aston Villa, who I expect to ship goals, which is quite funny because I've got target in defence. So this is the kind of bench boost team that I think I would put together. Um, if I had a bit more money, maybe I would maybe I would swap around some players. I'd probably want to get um, you know an extra, maybe another Arsenal player. Maybe you could go for Pepe or something in midfield instead of Mount uh, or Cantwell. If you've got a lot of money, maybe you could go for another Arsenal defender instead of Sice. Whatever it might be, there are other options. But I think this is what I would do for a bench boost. The only problem, like I've said, is I do feel like you take a bit of money out of your double game week players just to use a bench boost. And maybe triple captain's better. I think the only downside to using triple captain and doing the bench boost later is literally that you might have a bit of extra money on your bench. But if you've got the team value to not worry about that, I do think that could be an option. Because I think people are overlooking the triple captain this week. You could triple captain Aguero, Sterling, or De Bruyne, get that huge score... And then still have your bench boost for later on. Like I said, where you're going to have four single game week players. Now, I actually have that in this. I actually have uh, I actually have five single game week players here. Um, size, Cantwell, Pookie, Mount, Lascelles. Now, you could, I could put someone else in. Like I said, I could put another, I could put Mings in instead of Lascelles. Whatever it might be, just to get another double game week player out. But you're going to have at least three minimum single game week players in your bench boost. Potentially four. And if you're doing that, what's the difference between using it in this week and a different single game week when you've maybe got a little bit more data to play with and you can get rid of your triple captain. If you've not got triple captain because you've used it on Mane, Salah, in Game Week 24, it doesn't matter, but just something to consider. And the last draft is for someone that's got no chips, where they want to use the unlimited transfers to mix their team up a little bit. Uh, not using bench boost this week. They haven't got a free hit or wild card next week. So you've kind of got to mix and match the double Game Week players that you want to play in the double Game Week, but also keep long term, as well as some other players that, yes, they don't have double Game Weeks, but they have good fixtures afterwards so let's talk about the key parts of this team so double game week wise you still got Leno in goal you got Egan in the back Sheffield United I think are really good for the double game week but not fantastic afterwards and Egan is at a price that you could sell him he's actually 4.6 million and my team is 4.5 so Leno Egan you've got your triple man city but I've gone for Laporte instead of Sterling Aubameyang up front and Grealish so that's seven double game week players now bearing in mind you're not playing a bench boost anyway so you're already you're only four players off the maximum of 11 and I think you've got really the main ones that are going to hurt here. Sterling's not in here, of course, but you've got Laporte instead. You could go for Sterling, depending on how you want to set up your team. But I would go for something like this. Now, let's talk about why. So, Leno in goal has the double game week. It's not as good as Henderson's double game week, but he has more games to finish the season. If you want to go set and forget, I think Leno is potentially better than Henderson for the rest of the season. Henderson can't play against Man United, so for the last eight game weeks, he only has seven games. And also, Arsenal's fixtures are pretty good after the double game week as well. So I would probably stick with Leno. Uh, in terms of Egan, again, that doesn't really matter. If, you, if you've if you got more money to spend on someone like Stevens or whatever, then fair enough, do that. Uh, but I would have one Sheffield United defender in there. De Bruyne and Aguero, I've already talked about enough. They're, they're just great options. I just think Laporte is going to maybe steady that Man City defence and be the reason they probably get more clean sheets for the last nine game weeks than they have. I'm not saying they'll get more in nine game weeks than they will the rest of the season, but as a percentage, I think he'll really help that. And he's got a, a attack potential as well. Obviously, that's good for the double game week and beyond. Sterling is really good for the double game week, and I'm not saying he's going to be a bad option for the rest of the season. I'm just not sure at his price so we want to risk keeping him right from the start when we don't know how he's going to perform. Uh, Aubameyang, I actually, I really like Aubameyang, probably even more than Aguero um, going forward after the double game because the fixtures are just better. I'm not saying he'll outscore Aguero in the double, but after that I think he will, and he's probably likely to get more minutes as well. And the good thing about Aguero, so one of the things I have to talk about for this draft, there's no Liverpool players in it at all, which is a risk, right? Don't get me wrong, they play Everton away 
in game week 30. I think potentially, yes, you could try and get away with not having players for that one from Liverpool, especially when everyone is trying to target double game week players. Some people will keep Trent in. Some people might even keep Manny or Salah, but not many people are going to triple up, I don't think, in game week 30. Going after that, they've got some good fixtures. They are going to have that league wrapped up pretty quick. Whether or not they're going to fully go for it after that, I just don't know. My assumption is all the players are going to want to play. There's no real reason to rest them. And so the majority of like the Mane, Salas, Trents of that will carry on playing. But we just don't know that. So I do think there's a good opportunity to maybe, if you're really willing to take that risk, to do it. You have got Aguero in there at 11.8 million. So you could swap maybe later on in the season when you've got a couple of transfers, even if you want to take a hit. Do Aguero and Martial, for example, to like a six, seven million pound midfield uh, forward and then swap Aguero's price into midfield and get Mane or Salah. So you've got the price point to do that or you could do it with Aubameyang as well. So those options are there. Grealish, again, I'm not sure I'd want to keep my uh, Aston Villa players after the double game week, but if you're going to keep anyone, he is the best option for sure. And I've got Triple Man United again. Look, maybe you don't want to do that, but they have got really... Like Spurs away is not the worst fixture to open with. But after that, they've got some really nice fixtures. And for the remainder of the season, I think Fernandez is going to be a shoe in in most people's teams. I think you can make a case for a second attacking player, especially with Pogba and Rashford fit as well. Martial, the, the forward, is the one that I'm going with while he's listed as a midfielder. I think Cantwell is probably the best fifth, fifth midfielder out there for that price. You could go for Fleck for $5 million, uh, But I just think I'd rather save the money. And I think he's got a pretty good fixture this week as well. And then I've got Maguire in defence. Man United's defence, I think, has been better than it's maybe given credit for. And yes, they've conceded the odd goal here or there, which has been frustrating. But I do think the defence has improved uh, as the season's gone on. I think it's going to be... I think I don't think necessarily players like Fernandes will completely revolutionise how we defend. But he is someone that will get tackles in. And I always think sometimes, if you've got a player in that's going to help you drive forward and attack, while you're attacking, you're not having to defend. So I think that will help as well. So I think you can make a case for a Man United defender... Uh, but again, you could go for someone else if you wanted to. Lascelles, I've already talked about. Good bench option, good fixtures. And Bolly, I think Wolves fixtures are really good to open, which is why I've got Jimenez in. You could go for Sais, um in the last kind of six matches that him and Bolly have played. Sice has had a higher goal threat, uh, but Bolly is absolutely nailed on. Perhaps if you've got no other chips, that's kind of what you want to go with. Uh, and I do think set and forget keeper is what I would do. I, rotation for nine game weeks, I just don't think I would do it. So this is kind of a team that I would put together if I had no other chips. And I just wanted to roll with it for the rest of the season. Yes, there's no Liverpool players. Yes, that could be a concern. But you've got that Aguero money to swap into midfield uh, if you want to. And I just think De Bruyne has been so good uh, that you probably want to keep him. Man City are a little bit frustrating because without chips anyway. Because they got a double game week. And I think they play Chelsea and Liverpool the next two games, which isn't great. Like If you've got a free hit, you could even free hit in game week 32 when Liverpool play Man City and go without their players. But either way, they got Chelsea and Liverpool, which of course they can put goals past. It's not the ideal fixtures, um, but after that, they're really, really good. So you are going to want Man City players. And, you know, if Aguero gets almost as many minutes as Mane and Salah, could he outscore them? He'd probably get close. But like I said, the money is there if you want to make that switch. So I think this is a pretty sweet side if you've not got any chips. Uh, but of course, as always, let me know in the comments below. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of the drafts, which players you absolutely have in whatever draft you do. And which players are you unsure about? Leave a comment below. I'll try and get back to as many as possible. If you are new around here, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. There's so many more videos to come for the rest of this season. Obviously, into next season as well. And hit that like button. It's much appreciated. I'll have another video out tomorrow where I look more at my team and what I'm going to do with my chips that I've got left. Um, I've got only got the free hit, so that might be interesting to hear about. Uh, and kind of which players I'm looking to target from the off as well. So I'll have that out tomorrow. Loads more to come after that. If you want to watch another video, stick around after I stop talking because they'll come up on screen. Otherwise, I'll catch you soon. Cheers all.